Hey guys, welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the first part of our filtration segment. Hey Fanatics family, I've noticed a high... I've got notifications, sorry. Welcome back to Fanatics family. I've noticed a high number of questions on the Facebook group regarding cycling your aquarium. So today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the topic. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell below to stay updated with our future uploads. You can also check out the Facebook group in the link below. I'm sure you've all heard of the biological cycle or nitrification process. This all refers to the nitrogen cycle. Firstly, fish waste can release ammonia into your water, which is toxic to your fish. The nitrogen cycle helps avoid this. It's a process where beneficial bacteria become established in your tank and filter. This allows toxic ammonia to be converted into nitrite, which is also toxic, and then into less toxic nitrate. The beneficial bacteria in your filter will supplement your fish's environment by neutralizing their toxic waste. However, if you let nitrite accumulate in your aquarium for a long enough time, it can reduce your fish's appetite as well as cause algae bloom. That's why water changes are necessary. So how long does this nitrogen cycle take? The nitrogen cycle can take anywhere from two weeks to two months. It's all dependent on a number of factors. The best way to keep an eye on your cycle is to purchase aquarium test kits, just like these right here. These are Salafet test kits and the test kits I choose to use in my aquariums. They're easy but accurate for a hobby grade test kit. During the cycling process, ammonia will rise and drop as it's converted into nitrite. Check out this graph here. It clearly explains how the ammonia is converted into nitrite and then nitrite to nitrate. Nitrate won't appear in your tank unless there's significant levels of nitrite. Once it hits these correct levels, nitrite will be converted into nitrate and your cycle will be complete. Ammonia is introduced into your aquarium via fish food and fish waste. Goldfish are fed a variety of different foods which have varying ingredient qualities and nutritional composition. Flake foods provide relatively low nutritional benefits and therefore have a reduced ammonia output in comparison to a higher protein pellet like these. The fish waste not captured by your filter system is left to decompose at the bottom of your aquarium, leaching ammonia into your water column. This is why good regular cleaning of your mechanical filtration is beneficial as well as water changes to remove these physical contaminants before they have time to start breaking down. Many breeders across the world conduct regular 100% water changes to mitigate the effects of organic waste buildup in their systems. Depending on your pH levels, your ammonia toxicity will vary. A pH of 7 and below is acidic and your ammonia will become ionised and form ammonium. NH4. However, if your pH is above 7, your water will be alkaline and your ammonia NH3, which is far more toxic and deadly to fish in high concentrations. Ammonia will build up in your aquarium until the bacteria is formed that starts to process it. Your tank may become cloudy in this process, but do not worry, this is just your bacteria cultures forming. Once your ammonia levels have spiked and start to decline, you know you're into the second phase. Well, you ask, what is the second phase? I don't know. The second phase is where nitrite levels will start to rise as your ammonia decreases. Nitrite is the byproduct of nitrous ammonious bacteria. This organism will oxidize with ammonia, forming nitrite. Essentially, this bacteria consumes ammonia and produces nitrite, which is also just as toxic to your fish. Just like the first stage, you have to build up a level of nitrite before your colony of bacteria is formed. Nitrates are the final product of the nitrogen cycle. Once your nitrite was reached a high enough level, Nitrobacter, which is the bacteria that convert nitrite into nitrate, will start to form. Once the levels of ammonia and nitrite have reached 0 ppm, otherwise known as parts per million, you'll know your aquarium is safe and cycled and ready to add some fish. There are two methods in which you can reduce nitrites in your aquarium. One is to perform weekly water changes. For goldfish, I recommend two 50% water changes once a week in an ideal world. Where this isn't possible, a water change every week or bi-weekly is still okay. 20% will suffice. These water changes will also benefit your tank by removing DOCs, otherwise known as dissolved organic compounds. The water change will also replenish trace elements and minerals that your goldfish need. Alternatively to water changes, plants can also remove nitrates. Plants such as anubias, duckweed, waterlesses or java ferns are all acceptable. 
However, we all know that goldfish are omnivorous and they do like to eat some plants. So that's it for today guys. Remember that goldfish produce high levels of waste due to their size and eating habits. As you can see, these fish are begging for some food. This brings me on to part two. Part two of our filtration segment will go over flow rates, filter media, types of filters, and also sizes of filters. So see you next Sunday and happy fish keeping.